All right, man. Welcome to the Day Portner Show with Eddie and Company. Uh, Dave, before we get into anything, let's talk about Felix Gray, the beautiful glasses that you have in your face right now. I've been wearing these forever. I wear them even off camera, just watching TV now. Blue light, so I, I get headaches if I don't wear them. Um, yeah, this, do you have the ad in front of you? Yeah, so five years ago, Felix Gray set out to create eyewear that would improve daily screen time. Since then, Felix Gray has been on a mission to create a better relationship with technology. Felix Gray lenses filter 15 times more blue light that can make screen time tough on eyes and disruptive to sleep. Uh, like you always talk about, you wear the Roblings. But you have a couple different pairs now, right? You're like a, you got a rotation at this point. I got a ton of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got like kind of square ones. I got these. I got these. I think I got a diff couple different pairs of the Roblings, like dark and light frames. Good people, uh, the, the big stoolies. I know they donated some funds to the to the bar stool fund. So uh, non prescription and prescription is available. Check them out now at FelixGrayGlasses.com slash Dave. That's F E L I X G R A Y glasses.com slash Dave. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. Felix Gray glasses.com slash Dave. Go get some glasses, uh, blue light. I mean, you need them. Everybody needs them. We all look at the screen entirely too much. So go do that. Um, all right. So you're, you're a little hot this morning. I did have a surprise for you, but now I don't know if I should bring in that surprise. Yeah, I'm hot. I just, I don't like, and I like Kareem, but it's like, I, I can't have a guy who's as that lackadaisical as like my guy, I guess. Like, I feel like I have to ask him for everything. It drives me nuts. We have this and PFFs and it's like, they get me the sheets right before we have Dana White coming on late. Like, get me a fucking sheet on everything in the world that I could possibly know about Dana White that's coming on. The fact I have to ask for that, Paul, I don't like why do I, wouldn't you at some point to be like, you got him in the sheet? Like, it's just, I still, <laughs> fucking people are here. Are you back? Yes. What's going on? There's just a delivery and I hate, I, it's like, I'm going to stop doing this show and I'm going to stop doing BFS real soon if people don't get their shit together. I could give a fuck less. It's more benefit to everybody around me doing these shows than me. I don't give a fuck. Cream, like, what the fuck? Does, does Kareem or Paul, anybody give any thought at all, like, forward? Like, let's make sure, like, he has the shit ready. It's like, I, it's crazy. Like, even Paul, you saying, do you see Dana's in the news? Shouldn't, shouldn't that be instant? Well, he's on the show tomorrow. Like, I saw it. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I haven't been in, involved in this prep show forever. Like, never, never. Then what, never what are you doing on it? Then what are you on it? Why am I looking at you? No, that's, huh? that's fine. No, I, they send over. Well, the, why are you on it? They send over the topics. If you have nothing to do with the show, why are you on it? I'm, they send over the topics to me and I add things that I think that should be added in. That's the end of the, they send me. Then the why are you on the show? I will get off the show now. Everybody has your attitude. Oh, I'm just do this, this, this. But like, I, I, honestly, I want to stop this show. I want to stop BFFs and I want to do one show and concentrate on it. And yeah, put I mean, people if, if who will fucking concentrate go, on. Well, this is the way it's going to go. Like, I'm not going to allow anyone else to do your stuff but me. Like, fuck everyone else here. Because if I'm just going to have to wear your team's shit after a month. Well, Kareem, them, like Kareem, what, what is, what is, is Kareem on this? What does Kareem do? Works for you. I do. I, I don't have that much stuff where I shouldn't be overloaded. Like, I get the sheets five, ten minutes before we do this. It's crazy. How long have we known Dana White's on the show? Over a week. So, Kareem, what are you doing? Is he on this? I don't even know. The Dana one, it was just a miscommunication between all of us. Yo, how is that a miscommunication? Well, we, we generally don't give you sheets for Dave Porno show, so we just... For guests! For guests! But you usually know them. Like that's so it's more of like a free What now what is the last time we had a guess? If we have a guess, I need a sheet. That is so day one obvious shit to give the people on the show uh sheets on a guest. I think Aikman was the last one we just talked about. Yeah. And and I'm pretty sure I had a, a long sheet on Aikman. It's a Correct. big sheet. So I was what ready are we to go. talking about? Just saying. So Kareem, what do you do? How is that a miscommunication? For a week, we've known he's on the show. Who asked for it? I did. There was, if I didn't ask for it, I'd have nothing. And it started with Stetson Bennett, who I know we talked about and came last. He's fucking not of his name's not even right on the sheet. There's zero information on him. I know him as a quarterback, but like, what are we doing? 
How does Stetson Bennett last week on the BFF? St- I forget what his name was. It was just, they had the wrong name. They didn't even know his name was. How is that possible? Anyone? No one has an answer. Like, I just don't, Kareem, unless you're doing a whole shit ton of stuff I'm unaware of, I don't know what you're doing. For, we've talked about it, and we'll just, we're going to do, we'll do better. We'll give you. The but but you've doctor. said this now. Where, where I start losing, I've heard we'll do better a lot from well, you. The problem and it's get, not getting better. It just got delegated, and it shouldn't have been is what it comes Who's to. delegating? Why do you have to delegate shit? Well, saying, what like, is so like busy in your Bennett, life? The Stetson Bennett, sheet, what it, for example, what? like that. Why are you delegating anything? What are you so busy with your life that you're delegating with? That just went to Devin, who's been doing it forever, is my point. Why are you delegating anything? What? Why are you delegating anything? I didn't delegate the BFF sheet. That's just kind of how the nature of, like, our meetings that we do on Monday mornings went. But 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 at the position you're in, why would anybody let anybody touch it and be responsible for anything responsible. except you yes i agree and then it's like you're gonna so then what are you us. doing you're so lackadaisical it's just like you do it and the stats in bed like you don't read over the sheet be like that's not his fucking name no we go over it before but i just it was like a i wasn't proofreading her like spelling but from now on it's gonna be it's on. not spelling it was a totally different fucking name to the point i and i'm not the best at names to the point i'm like wait the yeah, fuck she, on what's yeah, going spelling. on she said stats in benton it was like that was spelled because she doesn't know who he is. But so from now on, that won't happen. And even the guest thing on BFF, again, like to get a guest, I had to threaten you with your job yesterday. So, yeah, I'm hot, Eddie. I get it. I, uh, I, I'm just saying from my perspective, I, me personally, I still have a bad taste in my mouth from the Jay Cutler one. So I, I came to go today. So I, Like, I, my, my thing is this, which I've said good. with doing this show from the beginning. I don't want to waste my time just showing up and doing something. But I'm not going to be the guy at this point in my fucking life who's doing all the research for my own shows. We have enough people. I would think this would be something that would be a prior- my fault. I got the wrong guys. Like, Dana White, if we know he's on for a week, I should be getting shit continually through the week. Like, as he makes news, he makes news all the time. And then final, like a sheet, like, I'd like it, like, I wake up this morning in my ideal world, I have everything, and I'm prepping for, like, an interview with this guy. That's what I'd like to do. I get my sheets three seconds before we go to air. And 90% of the time, I'm the one, like, where's the sheet? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, like, how the fuck can you do a good interview or get on the subjects you know when you don't even like? Yeah, I know who Dana White is. Obviously, I'm very familiar with him. But like, there's a lot of shit that he's constantly in the news for. Moving on. So yeah, I was a little bit hot with that. I was a little bit hot with that. I don't BFFs. I get the thing they say average. Like I get noon. We go what one? That's kind of like a continually, and I don't know. But when you have a guest like Dana White. Or color or anybody like I want fucking everything, and if I don't use it, I don't use it. And I, the problem is, I don't know like is, I don't know what else my team's doing. Like I do pizza reviews. My Austin's on top of everything. Maybe I can make Austin. Like maybe he's just gonna be the everything guy because he's the only guy who never or rarely fucks up. He's like on top of everything. He's a fucking cardboard box. Like, talking a fucking wall, but he doesn't fuck up. He's on top of everything. Like, he just doesn't fuck up. If I'm like, get me the sheets beforehand, I'll have the fucking sheets beforehand. Every time I have a call, 20 minutes before, hey, you have this. He's the only guy talking to a fucking wall, personality of an ant, but he doesn't fuck up, and he works hard. Yeah, well, all right. They, You know, Kareem said it would be better next time, so. I guess. But I've heard that a lot, and it's the last time I'm going to hear it. I'm promising, and I like Kareem, but it's the last time I'm going to fucking hear it. 
All okay, right. Let's go. Last time. All right. Um, well, to kick off the show, I, I wanted to bring in um, our Barstool NFL senior analyst, uh, unless you have a conversation with him. And che? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Uh, <laughs> How we doing? I'm all right. <laughs> I mean, I was on all that before. It doesn't seem all right, but let me talk to you. Uh, you know, a lot of guys staying on the hot seat. One guy you've called unreplaceable is me. So let me go at you a little bit. Saturday. You called me. You called me. I called you irreplaceable. Correct. You well, you're. I I, I don't know. I'm un, I'm I'm, pre- I'm moving forward with the understanding that that has not changed in the last two months or whenever you said that. <laughs> I don't remember saying it, but you are a one in a gazillion guy. There is no other personality guy like you. What are you? Is he going to go after me right now for Mac Jones? I mean, yes. Mac Jones was not. You were sitting back there, fucking with a fucking hot dog in your asshole. You didn't say a word <laughs> real time. Mac Jones played fucking fine. He was the problem. The defense couldn't stop Dick. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't the only problem. I mean, he didn't play a good game, but he. I. I mean, when you're down a hundred instantly. A lot of quarterbacks won't have a good game. Yeah, and you know I said this to you in real time, and I'd like to reiterate it. Bill Belichick is getting a huge free pass here. He has been bad without Tom Brady. I know you're not a numbers guy, so I pulled the numbers. Without Tom Brady, well, I mean they made it, they made the playoffs with the rookie quarterback this year. Congrats! You know, how the team time tea times next week it looks pretty open. But I it, 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 listen, Chaya. If you told Patriot fans we got a new quarterback that we like, we made the playoffs, and we're back on the upswing, I've already said it. Patriot fans, including myself, got carried away with the win streak and set the goals higher than they were at the beginning of the season. Okay. Well, I'm just telling you, Bill Chicken and his career, without Tom Brady, 53-60. and 60. Only two winning seasons out of seven, yeah, well, one t- and t- two t- in t- the playoffs. I, you're, you're including the Browns. They took over that were fucking terrible. I would give him credit. Do you give him – what percentage of credit do you give him for the uh, Giants Super Bowl versus the Bills when he's sure, defensive coordinator? Sure, defensive coordinator. coordinator. Great defensive I'm coordinator. I'm asking. Yeah, certainly. He gets he gets credit for that. But he, again, All he's right. a coordinator. Todd Bowles is a great well, defensive coordinator too. He's not getting – you know, they're not throwing in parades. Um, he did a great Todd Bowles have six, Does Todd Bowles have six Super Bowl rings as a head coach? With Tom Brady, yeah. Uh, uh, no, sorry, with, that, with Tom Brady, no, obviously. Um, but I'm just saying Bill Belichick is getting a huge free pass. Did not have his team ready to play. I think that's something you got to uh, own. Several times, and this was uh, a point in the game where I call this out in real time. There's a situation. What are we doing here? What are we doing, Eddie? What, I know the Patriots lost. Okay. Well, I mean, well hold it's... on. This is very much a welcome to the real world moment because three Fuck years yeah, it is. Three years ago. Why is it they made the playoffs? Eddie, did you make the playoffs? No, we suck. When's the last time the Bears, like, last year? won a playoff game? Oh, they were in the playoffs huh. last year. 2010. Okay. So, I mean, welcome to real world. The, the, the COVID season, I don't count. Brady's gone. They, they fucking made the playoffs. And, by the way, when Brady got hurt with Castle, they were as good as anybody in the league. I mean, we're talking about playoffs. They didn't make the playoffs that year. That was it. Wasn't the fair. best record never to make the playoffs. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah, but I'm just saying. So, um, yeah. but right. overall, well, I'm saying. Overall, I just want to make. Why? What is this? <laughs> well, we wanted you to wear the loss a little bit. <laughs> this, is, this is obviously a tough time as I was on before, but <laughs> I do want to to just talk to you really quickly. You have to own this and leaving during half. What are you t- talking about? What are we talking about? Your your you team got- your team got. I have owned it. You left during halftime. <laughs> you got to no, sit there I, and take no, it no, 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 just like 31 no, 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 other I, franchises I, I, fan no, bases no, no. do. I get kicked really, in the face first of all, every year. First of all, my team at hasn't had a home playoff game take, since I, I was leave in at halftime, college. You fucking idiot. This is our you first one this nerd. Sunday. I didn't leave take at losses. fucking halftime. Take losses. Championships aren't handed to you. True or false? Did I leave at halftime? Like, what, one minute? Did I leave at halftime? Yeah. All right, that's a lie. You filmed, so you filmed the video, you sat back down, you left. I don't think you even saw the third quarter kickoff. Uh, interception, sitting next to Feidelberg to start the third quarter on a deflection. I was sitting in my seat when it fucking happened. Okay, I'm just saying, you got to stay for the whole game. Well, so you're wrong. 
You're wrong. What do you mean I got to stay for the whole You got to get kicked you're in the face 100. like everybody no, no, else. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? If your team's down 100, you have to sit there? Why? Yes. That, that, Why? That You're just very – The game was over. You're very – and deservingly so. You guys obviously earned it, but you're entitled. We talked about – No, I'm not. I'm, not a, I'm a realistic person, Stephen. was 28-3 in the Super Bowl. I sat there and said we'd win. I watched that game. They had no chance, so I left. What's your point? You got to you gotta take it Why? like everybody else. A court, what are you talking about? Every, a few years ago, or I guess it's a lot of years ago, uh, everyone's bashing the Miami Heat fans for leaving at the end of the game when you know Ray Allen hits that miraculous three, they force game seven, et cetera. Don't be that guy, Wait, I'm just what? saying. I think, I think that you are a very good that, NFL yeah, that, fan. No, 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 no. You're being an idiot. You're saying that Heat fans got roasted for a game in which they came back. Correct. Because they left early. I will never leave a game early if the Patriots can come back in. I that that was a dead dog. What you're, that, those are two totally different analogies. I mean, step B does not happen without step A. Step C is them coming what? back. What? Huh? I'm, what? I'm just saying. I've been there. I've been on. No, 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 no. What you said is don't be that guy that leaves at halftime when your team comes back. I'll never be that guy. Okay. I'm just saying that I say think what I, they lost by 50. There was no chance they were coming back 28, three. I sat there and said, they come back. I know this team by the back of my hand. They had no chance of that game. Okay. Well, it's my duty. So apologize. It's my duty. Apologize. It's my duty. Apologize for what? For, you just made a false analysis. Uh, you I said you come left at the halftime, you left with... No, 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 but you said two different things. You compared it to the Heat. Like, yeah. I'm a fan that's going to... Well, that'll never happen. If that happens, I will apologize to you. And If I leave a Patriot game or stop rooting or watching on a game the Patriots come back, hand up. I'll be the first guy. Like, bad fan. That will never happen. That wasn't what that game was. They lost by 100. I, that interception, it's like... It was, it was over before that, but after that, it was dead. It was done. I was correct. They lost by a hundred. Okay, I'm just saying this is what all. So other, apologize. This, this is what all other apologize. teams endure. Apologize. This is what all apologize. other teams endure. Apologize. I want an apology. I want you. And I if want I, you, I want you. And to, if I leave a game where the Patriots come back because I'm like, oh, they're dead, I'll apologize to you. I'm just saying. Would you make that face? I'm just saying. You said you don't want me to be the Heat fan. I don't. I don't want to see you do that. I think that you. I, I will never do that. I think that you're a great representative of NFL fans. Correct. You flew from Correct. Florida. So so to no time out. Time out. Time out. Nobody can get on a fan base if they leave early third quarter and lose by forty when they're already losing by thirty. You have no no obligation to stay in the stadium. Now, if they come back and win, you're a bad fan. You don't have faith in your team. I know this team inside out. They had no chance. Could stop Allen. He scores every time they have the ball. You want me to sit there and watch that? Why? Tell me Bill Belichick didn't prepare the team. That's you change the subject. I want an apology, and then we can move on. I think we can both admit those things. I can apologize, and you can admit Bill Belichick did not have his guys ready to play. Both of those things. I said that I, I said I was embarrassed top to bottom by that team. You want me to sit there and do it? Apologize. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. Well, you all change the subject. You got to eat the loss. You got to sit there and no, 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 what I'm, what I'm saying to you and what I said to you three years ago, and I will pull the clip, the sweet isn't as sweet without the sour. And now you have a very, very but they, sour they, team. But, but no, no, no. You, you, you dummy. This, it doesn't matter me sitting there. Like, I already – it was already as bad as it could get. Just sitting there watching them lose by 20 versus 30. Who this cares? is what all the other fan bases go through. You think no, Bears you, fans feel good about watching any field goal but ever? There was no different. There was no different. Like I was, you, I didn't feel any more pain or less pain when they're down twenty-seven versus thirty-four. So then, why are you leaving? Like 
Just because I what because I don't want to sit with a bunch of fucking fatsos in this fucking tight ass room that I've been in for twelve fucking hours. When I just landed, I want to go home and go to bed because I had to wake up at nine a.m. and fly the next day. I'm not arguing you have a lot of obligations. You are stretched very thin, but I'm just saying. Tell that to Kareem. <laughs> he has headphones. Who's, on. I don't know what he does. I need a camera on Kareem just to see what he does. What is he doing? He's, he's right here. He's, he's producing the show. Um, but I, I, I did, I did want to address the point that we were on very different sides of earlier in that who would you take right now for the rest of their career, Mac Jones or Tom Brady? I said that, Tom, that Mac Jones' skill set grows on trees, which was taken out of context for sure. I sent Kareem a very nice graphic, which he can now display. I'd just like you to, to pick out um, – this is a very common thing around draft time, player ABC, uh, even threw in a D for you. Uh, I just wanted to, to show you that, and uh, you know, after this year, uh, you know, based on the performance, what type of uh, – What the fuck am I looking at? What type of – What uh, am I looking at? What type of player would you pick? I, I outlined four players. I took their names off, um, and I gave their stats, and I just wanted to see which one you thought was a, a future uh, four Super Bowl minimum guy and a Hall of Famer. That's all. I'm just, Wait, I'm just pointing out the – I, I, what, what player do I want out of these? Yes. B. B. All right, so Dave will be taking Gardner Minshew 2019 rookie season. I just wanted to illustrate that Mac Jones' skill set um, does grow on trees in the fact that as far as arm strength, he does have good pocket noise. He made some nice throws, but he didn't have a good game. I don't Do think you, he called. What, you have four rookies here, you mean? Nope. Uh, player A is Mac Jones. Uh, player C is uh, Ben Roethlisberger from this year, and player D is Davis Mills. So I don't – what like, what is the point of this? I just wanted to show you that Mac Jones and the type of company that he holds is, is very much fits in with this graphic and these players. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't take Mac Jones over these guys right now, but I don't think wait, by wait, any but means – Wait, Gardner Minshew, didn't he have a great rookie year? I mean, by your standards, yes. But by what, by what standards? I mean, what are you talking about? Put in Troy Aikman's rookie year. Very bad. Yeah. So what's your point? You just pick and choose? Like, I mean, that's the most Stephen Che thing of all time. You go through all quarterbacks and just randomly pick up four to feed. Put in Aikman. Put in Aikman's rookie year. Put in Steve Young's rookie year. Like, what are we talking Peyton about, Manning, you fucking certainly. dummy? Uh, I'm just, so I'm what's just, your point? I'm just saying that's the – So, all right, those, put, those put Peyton cups. Manning's rookie year. Put fucking – uh, Aikman's rookie year, put fucking who else sucked as a rookie that became great. Brett Favre probably wasn't great as rookie. Put those up with fucking Mac, and I'll pick Mac Jones, you dummy. What's your point? Um, great, I, I, you, I, I, I just, great, you're a stat fucking geek <laughs> that picked out of the history of football four guys to fit your argument. No, what the those, fuck does that those are, prove? Those are very much comps and very relevant to today's game. Well, how are they comps? They're comps for your argument. Of course. Great. Let's do those four that I just named rookie year and pick one who you want. We'll see who's in good Blind resume. Steven's a big blind resume guy. I just want to see if you wanted to reevaluate your take. Do you you get how intellectually dishonest that is, what you just did? To remove the names from it? It removes all bias. No. To pick things to to try to, like, back your specific argument. I mean, you could have just picked Mac Jones. Mac Jones was in that. It's not like Mac Jones wasn't there. Mac Jones was player A. But what's you? You're just you. You put like Gardner Minshew. You're just trying to create. I picked he Minshew. A, he had six interceptions, the least amount. Yeah, he is a player that was a rookie two years ago. He was a six or three years ago. He was a six. Okay, pick. so let's pick. Let's put in Peyton Manning, Troy Aikman, and Brett Favre. It's, it's, a, diff- it's a different game. I tried to get guys that were comps. What I don't I don't know what you mean game. by it's a different game. What does that mean? It, what does that mean? It's a much different game as far as number of times you pass the ball. I mean, look at the the passing records that have been happening recently. I mean, Tom Brady threw for so five thousand yards this year. Who cares? What's your point? My point is that Mac Jones, while he had a good rookie year, and I will admit that, he is by no means a, a future Hall of Famer at this point, um, and he's not a guy you can tie your franchise to and say he's a four right. Super Bowl minimum guy, let me which ask he did you a couple this, months you ago. Dummy. Let, let, I still think. Let me ask you this. If you did you, after Brady's rookie year, would you have said that about Brady? Uh, no, so don't – no, no, that, Steven, that, shut the fuck that, up. That, 
that is the problem that all Patriots fans, and it's a sickness because you believe that all guys are going to be Tom Brady. So it's not Mac Jones that's going to be this next guy. As long as Bill about, is there. I don't think, I don't think it's that. No, I don't believe that. That's uh, you may be right, but you you claim victory without any evidence of victory. His career will be determined by that. But you wouldn't have said that about Brady. I've watched more Brady than you have. Pro- yeah, you're, you're probably right. Oh, probably? I've watched, with the exception of Wednesday at Tampa Bay, every single game of his career. Yep. Okay. Looks well, thank you, right Stephen. Uh, appreciate the uh, analysis, as always. Our NFL senior draft analyst, Stephen Che. It's getting led to a slaughter here today. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> um, all right, Dave, before we move on, we do want to talk about bird dogs. You're back in and Miami. People it's- wonder why do I get so mad. It's because it happens in real time, like right before the show. Like I started texting with Kareem at – Ten sixteen a.m. Do I have a sheet on Dana White? I have something for the UFC card this weekend. I can print that for you and Eddie. Like what? what that? We're, that's like not why he's on the show. And then I just get uh, I get madder and madder. I'm not as mad now, and it sucks because I like Kareem. But come on, like enough is enough. If some people have the Mm, get after it. I'm going to be on top of shit personalities. Some don't. I'm starting to wonder. Um, bird dogs. <laughs> Didn't know I was going to have the at. I'm wearing them. Oh, I was wondering what the fuck you were doing. Yeah, I have them. I you wear got- them all the time. And I'm back in Miami. It's warm. And I'm wearing them. Yeah, joggers and pants. Uh, you know, the, that's the move. The legs look fire in bird dogs. And uh, they got the comfortable built-in underwear, right? So you don't got to worry about that either. Correct. Facts. Mm-hmm. I'm so starting that- to get back in my flow. I put them on, and I go for a little walk in my neighborhood in Miami because I haven't been walking. I'm getting fat and gross. So it's like I put on my bird dogs, take a little stroll, and go. And I'm sorry for yelling. I feel bad for yelling. I don't mean to yell. Why? I You've never felt so- bad before. I'm surprised you feel because sorry. Because I right kind of like Kareem. Yeah, of course you do. out of character for me <laughs> is it though <laughs> um uh, as fucking poor dylan sad eyes if it's out of character <laughs> um this is but he, you know what kareem's starting to give me dylan for uh dylan sad eyes vibes like you can yell but it's not changing anything like like dylan's one of the all-time punching bags this company's ever had he just wears it he just takes it but not you can't get him to change and that's where i'm losing it i feel like i've said over and over like let's be on top of shit yeah no i hear you um this is one of the best podcast promos we've ever had go to birddogs.com enter promo code dave and they'll throw in a free bird dogs whistle football uh you remember those nerf vortex holler footballs with the whistle you throw in them is that the best for tailgates uh that's birddogs.com promo code dave and boom a free bird dogs football with your pair of bird dogs uh you will not take these things off i promise you oh you got the listerines too huh they're surprisingly hard to find. I love them because they take no pocket space. Do you, ever wear the, do you ever wear the joggers? I, I have like three pairs of them. Yeah, I have one pair of the joggers. Yes. Joggers oh. are nice. I uh, gave Listerine a free ad and these seem to be like stuck together. I think they got washed. What happens if Listerine strips get washed? You jump in the pool? No, my pool, this house, it's a fucking house of darkness. The pool, <laughs> I might as well not even have a pool. It's not a sh- might as well be in Antarctica in this house. You're welcome to come over if you want. Yeah. No thanks. Hey, d- d- speaking of houses, how about the post? Um, writing that article about your Hamptons house. Two, like, well after the fact. Like, two years. And to be honest, I smell foul play. I, I spoke... I don't think people get, like... I don't know how to describe my level of fame and i don't mean that in like a super high level i mean it's a super like 
people want to fuck with me level. So I, in the Nantucket house, it, by the end of it, it's like every 10 minutes, people are coming by. There people hiding in my bushes, taking pictures of me. In the pool. Like, it got bad. So all I've asked is don't, don't say anything to these real estate agents. I don't trust real estate agents. I had to go back, and they always want me to buy more, do this, do that. They're like, we've never given out your address. It's like, okay, great. Can you just take it down where my exact address is on your specific page? They're like, we've never put your address anywhere. Dude, I, I had to send a screenshot of my exact address on the realtor's page. And the woman who wrote the article, I have no proof, her last name is the same name as my realtor. I think they're related. <laughs> is it, um, did you use the same person for Miami and New York? No, that's a ridiculous question for people who are fluent in real estate, Eddie. No, you could have like dual license ship. Yeah, but people like specify in uh, area. I know a ton of people who have Chicago and Florida, so that's why I the was same realtor. Yeah, like they they, they no. you're, you could practice both places. No, that's the thing. No, I I I'm sure it is, but like I don't believe what you're saying, like. The people specify real estate agents specify in areas they know the market by the way real estate agent real estate is one of the great shams of all time i don't even know what they do like i don't know what they do they just find, connect you to the house like they're all the same and then they i've watched enough uh like real estate shows they just negotiate to a price that you already know you're meeting in the middle it's like they i can need someone to call i don't know i don't trust real estate agents you know, it'd be tough, estate. though, is all those showings. I wouldn't like to do that. Fucking oh, showings are the worst. I hate looking at houses. Picture so. showing them. Picture fucking doing eight of those, at the, however many. Yeah, I had. guess that's it. I guess that's it. I remember there's a story like Miami. Remember we were using your friend, Paul, to try to find a place, the tall girl. Yep. And I was at dinner, and some guy comes up to me. He's like, never met him. And he's like, hey, I hear you're using, like, a JV agent. Let me know when you want to step up to the big leagues. Didn't know the guy. And he's a huge agent here. Probably could have found me a great house. But I'm like, I'm not going to use that guy ever. Like, who comes up to that? Like, what a scumbag thing to say out of the blue. I don't trust agents, generally. But oh. you need them. You need them because they have all the best houses. And meanwhile, I got a house in Miami that I bought that will never be ready. So, joke's on me. Are you regretting that purchase? Yeah. 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 You should have waited for something else, or what do you think? Yeah. It needs too much work. It's never going to be done. When that are you going agent, to Nashville? The agents there, who I kind of know, who I, I'm so dumb, I trust everybody. I don't know. They, whatever. It, it is what it is. Yes, I regret it. I think I should have bought something else. What about, uh, how's the Florida sports betting situation going? I was, I, I don't know. I mean, so we got asked very late to the game to help out because I don't know why so late, which I find hilarious because our competitors trash me. You'll read articles where I'm the devil, I'm all Dave. And then they need help and they're like, Dave, can you help us out? Dirty, do you want to talk about scumbag dirty business? This business too. Wait, who specifically one of like the, the, the big two asked you that? Yes. Really? Yeah, DraftKings. Oh, okay. And you're just no you're no problem with that or you obviously have a No, I found it ironic when you read all the shit in in between the lines like in the New York thing. I had nothing to do with why we weren't in New York. They were afraid to compete with us in New York and I don't blame them, but like I was the reason we didn't get in New York because I like my sex life and shit like that and this total garbage and malarkey. Uh MGM, MGM, like some anonymous scumbag quote, like MGM is a boss. Shut up. Anyways, they got to get signatures in Florida. And they're, I think they're going to be short to get it on. So the Seminoles have a monopoly on sports gambling and gambling in Florida. I think they pay a lot to the state. If you can get, I, I've heard all different numbers, 800,000 signatures, maybe something like that of registered voters that just say, put it on the ballot on November to open it up to 
so it's not a monopoly. Yes or no. They need 800,000 signatures. I don't think they're going to get it, but it's like they got to do it by the end of this month. So I just found out a couple weeks ago, like I didn't even know this was going on. They're like, can you help? And it was right when New York went live. So it's like, well, I feel like an idiot being like, help us get on the thing in Florida when we're not in New York. So I'm like, I got to let that pass for a week or two, which I did. And then I, we tried to help. We would be in Florida if Florida got legalized for everybody. But I think it's a long shot from everything I've read. It's very late in the game. And to be honest, we all know how the signature game works. If they don't want it on the ballot, it won't be on the ballot. You can disqualify signatures by just saying you can't read them. That happened to me when I ran for mayor in Boston. That's right. Because yeah, they got what? They got one in Hollywood and then they got one in Tampa. It's a Seminole tribe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's crazy not to let more people in. And as I said, it doesn't matter where you fall. And we're going to donate. Like people are like, yeah, but the Seminoles give money to education. So do we. You think we're not doing the same? The state wouldn't lose any money. So I don't know why you wouldn't want competition. Competition is always good for the consumer. Period. Period. Shop lines, promos. There's no reason you wouldn't want multiple companies competing because it helps the gambler, the end user. But I, I don't know. I doubt it'll happen. I hope it does. Yeah. And I, sorry, I meant to ask too. What What is like the actual problem with your place in Miami? No sunlight. Oh. No, you're, that's the rental. What's up with the real house? Like, why is oh, it oh, 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 it's just it's a shit show to build and construct. So when I bought the house... The market is so fucking hot down here. Like you have a second to decide. You look at a house and if you're, if you pass, it's gone. The house I bought, I love like it's, it's a awesome piece of land. It's right on the water, big plot, private things I was looking for. But I, I bought it so quick out of fear it would be gone. And then the second time I went back in when I owned it, I'm like, oh shit, this place needs a ton of work and yeah. it's slow to do work because of a multitude of factors, but COVID, supply chain, permitting, you name it, anything, building, doing anything's hard. Yeah, a lot of shit going on. Champagne problems for sure, but it is what it is. Wait, and when are you going to Nashville? I don't know that that's happening yet. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, all right. How about, uh, I started, did you get a little mad at uh, Sherry DeVille, the porn star, at her her tweet? No, I was I no, I wasn't mad. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know how to interpret it because she made a joke no. with the... How to interpret it is Dave had a funny response. That's how you interpret it. There goes it, Dave being funny again. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. well, did you find out what that dream cam search was from the national championship Somebody day? said people are... It's like porn search. I don't understand why I would be on that. I have no <laughs> idea. I mean, I, I know I lay up like... But I don't understand why now. It's not like there's anything now to search for. Yeah. Back in the day, I could see it, but not now. I don't. I don't get that. How did uh, How did it feel to get back on the rundown? Normal. I mean, we've done it for so long, but back with the boys. It was uh, the yeah, McGillicuddy. Yeah, yeah. I was right. Everyone's done the. Re it's just we've lost so much. Like Arlen Specter was two thousand. Kevin's a dummy. Arlen Specter was two thousand and eight. That was the height of Spygate. I was going bananas during Spygate. So to think that like I wasn't Patriot Dave back then is bananas. People don't get that. That's the Patriot. Patriots are always fighting for something. If it wasn't one thing, it was another. They're a full-blown dynasty and weren't getting credit for winning because Spygate. Eric Mangini, I wanted to kill. Like I wanted to kill Eric Mangini. So to say that we weren't like already who we were, yeah, obviously things kept happening, but and we just don't have the files. We just don't have the files. I was looking all over for it. I can't find it. And at the first McGillicuddy was 2011. So I was right. Kevin was wrong per usual. Is McGillicuddy old enough to do podcasts yet? How is he, how is he not doing it? I think he big timed us. Like we, we tried, tried to get we tried him. tried to him. book him for uh, the Barstool documentary. And <laughs> he was like, no. Or his he's family piece his dad of, was like, no. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. McGillicuddy? All-time heel. Yeah, McGillicuddy's a piece of shit. <laughs> but he's your piece of shit. He's on your team. No, he's not. Just because he did that, we made him famous, and he wouldn't, like, come talk about it. No one would know who the fuck McGillicuddy was if it wasn't for us.
and they won't do anything to do it. I was like, fuck McGillicuddy. <laughs> we, <laughs> please, <laughs> that's an all-time ancillary character for Barstool. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> if you know um, McGillicuddy, go tell him he's a piece of shit. <laughs> um, we had an, a, 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 actually, l- let's talk about Helix here for a second, Dave. The Helix mattress, you got, you got to get some in your new place. I got mine. Yeah. It's awesome. Helix mattress. Well, I, yeah, if my place is ever done, I'm going to be sleeping on the street. Do they work on the street? Do Helix mattresses work on the street? Of course. I mean, they work anywhere. Put them on the it. cement. I'll do that. So you give it, Eddie. You give it. I don't have them yet. I'm living in a fucking... Yeah, a so I like my dunk. mattress a lot. The only they, place is 80 degrees and sunny, and I don't see a, sh- a fucking shred of sunlight. I like my mattress a lot. You got to do, like, a survey to, like, you know, test your size and everything. Obviously, bigger guys. So, they, you know, they gave me a nice mattress for me that was suitable for me. Uh, so it's just a quiz you take. It's two minutes to complete. It matches your body type and sleep preferences uh, to match you the perfect mattress. Uh, so why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect the way you sleep. Um, they have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Uh, Helix even is a financing option and flexible payment plans, so you have a great night's sleep is, is never far away. They have mattresses with specialized cooling technology. If you and your family can never agree on the temperature or the thermostat, you have those problems, right? Yes, I need things ice. Um, Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving sleep. Over 12,000 five-star reviews, over 1 billion hours slept on Helix mattresses. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Dave. That's helixsleep.com slash Dave for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Go check that out. Um, all right, inside Barstool, any word from uh, Rico Bosco? Any line of communication? I got to get him as anger management person. I, I, I'm responsible for everything, so I got to find that. Um, I got to get – no, I haven't talked in a couple of days. And I, like I said, I got to do everything. He's just sitting there probably like waiting to get his hand held. He needs a month of anger management therapy before he comes back. So I, this is real time. The clock doesn't start ticking till we get him in therapy. It's like, what if a month's gone and we don't have it? So he, every, we got to get him a therapist. And, and so it, what if he got one already? That, I mean, well, that would be great. Yeah. I what, assume I would know about that, but I haven't heard anything. Okay, so no word from the – what do you think of uh, – Big T and Hank trading blows about the uh, the situation. Are you, did you see all that? I mean, I saw Hank's article. And Big T fired back with about, you know, getting his balls out of your mouth or something like that. Big T is right. I mean, I was next to Dan on, you know, uh, when we were doing one of the live streams, and he was like, Hank's open mind. There is the, – the, the riders, and I, of which I am one – their main contention seems to be he just kept calling him his real name too much. Like, what are we talking about? And by the way, the fight, Rico picked the fight with Big T. Like, Big T is not somebody that is going out of his way to create enemies in the office. It's all Rico Bosco's fault. All of it. You can't cry when you create an enemy and the enemy is is tweaking you. Like, Give me a break. It's your fault, Rico. So no, there's I'm I'm on Big T side, one thousand percent. And what about this uh, Walker Jersey Jerry rivalry? Are you, you are you are you into that? Have you seen? I that? don't Is know what started. I mean, I it's easy to get me to just give attaboys when anybody trashes Walker. So I don't know why Jerry hates him so much. Did uh that Stetson Bennett thing. Uh, he retweeted after his charity and everything. What do you think about Walker ignoring the, the national <laughs> champion winner? Tough look. I'm sure he didn't see it or something. I don't see him doing that, but it was a tough look nonetheless. Good timing for him just out of the blue, Stetson Bennett, to bring that up. Like, I had no idea. But uh, to, to Walker's defense, I'm sure he didn't see it. Yeah. And then, Paul, we were talking before, Jersey Jerry, did he lose his Twitter account? He, he's scared? Yeah, he's he, yeah he, he got phishing scan. I guess they offered him a trip to Puerto Rico. 
and he like clicked on it and then went back and forth. The guy's calling him, uh, telling him he needs a thousand dollars to get his account back. Like the guy who actually hacked his account is going back and forth on the phone with J- Jersey Jerry making demands for his account. I don't know how people still fall for this shit. What, what, that's the current update right now. He's being held hostage by a terrorist. He, he's literally, he keeps calling me and I'm like, dude, we're recording. I don't know if you want to call him and be like, what's going on? But it's seems like quite the scenario. But yeah, Puerto Rico. He said he got an offer to trip to go to Puerto Rico and then it never oh, came through. Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. That's unbelievable. I'll see what, I'll call him. I'll, I'll see what's going on. He's probably so mad. I mean, talk about picking this this guy. He can't just fucking. No answer. <laughs> I can't believe the guy's threatening. Your call has been. Oh, he'll call you back. Um, Kareem, we got to explain this picture. Kareem, can you pull it up for us, please? We haven't done this in a while. Um, this was a late, a, a late breaking picture of, of, uh, of, of possibly Paul hanging with an enemy. I, we, you know, we had to get your thoughts here, Dave. Uh, well, first of all, it's Jeremy on the left. Um, who, you know, Jeremy, right? Yeah. 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 I, I, people always text me, not text me, but like DM me or something. Be like, you know, Paul's hanging out with the bubbly gang. I'm well aware of that. So I, it surprises me that this would be the first time that some, I mean, he's, he's with them all the time. Yeah, Lewis lived with me for six months after he was terminated at Barstool. So, yeah, we're still friends. He's in Miami this week for some Bitcoin things. So, yeah, we, we hang out. I try to keep church and state separate. Um, Dave, is, I, I understand where Dave's coming from. But, yeah, I'm still friends with Lewis. What was – which is bananas, by the way, because you'd have, like, bananas. But second, what was Dana uh, – Dana, what was Dante and – and Lewis going back and forth. Did you see that, Eddie? Yeah, I did see that. I have that here. That was my next. What day. is that? I have no, someone sent me that. Like, well, I have no idea what that's about. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much we could talk about it. Consider. What do you mean? This is what I'm talking about, Eddie. Oh, bravo, bravo. What? Bravo. It doesn't fit your agenda. No, it's not my agenda. It's fucking. Well, why can't we talk about it? It was publicly put out there. It was sent what? to me. Why? How much can we talk about gambling-related things? I don't know. I it, I have no idea what this is about. I'm asking, that, what is this about? That's the way I read it. It looked like a gambling-related. Uh, to me, if you read the thread, Dante was insinuating that he owed him twenty grand. That Lewis gambling. owed him twenty grand. Yeah, from like a gambling type endeavor. So that's why I said I don't know if we could talk about it because of I don't know. Have any idea what it's? I didn't do anything. What's it? True. The, bu- public gang doesn't work for us. True, I just never know the line. I don't know, you know, and it's Oh, you don't know the line, huh? I, I don't know the line. I think you know the line. Protect protect yours and come at me. What is this about? Do you know, Paul? Do you think I I, mean, I I was sitting with him and I was like, I don't know why you're engaging this. I guess Dante deleted everything. I, I actually don't sitting know. with who? I was sitting with Lewis when Dante that or Bubbly? Bubbly. I was sitting next to Lewis and I and because I, I saw it on Twitter when we were watching the Patriots game, and I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, Dante is making shit up and I have to defend myself. And I'm like, why even engage this? And Dante went and deleted everything. I don't know where it came from. Dante would probably be explaining. I don't know if it's like a legal gambling. Like that, maybe that's what Eddie's talking uh, about. I mean, I, I, let me tell you this. It ain't legal. Bubbly gang's involved in it. <laughs> so maybe that's it. But yeah, I, they went back and deleted it, I guess. But Eddie probably knows more. He's close with, you know, the dog. That's, um, that's all I'm under the impression of, of that there was a there was My a experience game. with these two people is I would tend to believe Dante. I, I, Dante, I, I, as far as I'm aware, has never misled me or anything. The other guy is involved in 38 different schemes every 15 minutes. Paul, what do you think about that? 
I'm not, I can't deny the fact that what Lewis has done in the past, um, I keep it, we're, we're friends, but like we keep it at a point where I'm not in a place where I, I think I'm opening myself up to problems. Like I'm not getting into business relation, like stuff like that, whatever happened in that, like all that kind of stuff. I'm, we're, we're just friends. We go out, we have a good time on a Friday night, that type of thing. Yeah, it's not, none of your, none of your, none of your business, right? I mean, it's my business. Oh, someone I'm friends with. I'm friends with all these characters in play here. This fucking right. guy, Jerry. Jerry hey. What the hell? What? The, what the hell? Yeah, it's a bad, bad start to the morning, Dave. <laughs> what happened? Well, this is the second time I got hacked. Uh, some guy on Instagram sent me a message, and I ignored it. It was about a trip to Puerto Rico. And then I went on Twitter and got the same DM, and I clicked it because I was like, oh, wow. And I clicked it, and then I just filled out my name, uh, oh, and, no. an address, phone number, and then I I pretty much got, got confirmation back on the email that I won the trip to Puerto Rico. And then before you know it, <laughs> I'm, my Twitter's down. Oh, Jerry. Do you think it's that fuck fucking... E from Entourage? I, it could be him. It could be a lot of people. It could be Brandon. It could be... I don't know who it is. So is somebody... Paul said someone is talking to you on the phone? Yeah, so I sent Gaz a, me, uh, a message. I got a... Um, what was it, Gaz? To, to my YouTube, right? A new... Yeah, it looks like he's locked trying to log into everything because you gave him every password. <laughs> yeah, well, he has my Facebook. Whoever it is, he has my YouTube. Uh, and he got my, my, my Twitter. I changed my Instagram in time. Um, but, but he I, I don't know. You on the phone, right? Yeah. So, so I got a no, a no caller ID on the phone for like a minute and he's like, and that's when I messaged Gaz, he, whoever it is, um, it is, I think Indian. Uh, he said that if I send him a thousand dollars, I'll get my account back. I, I won't do that. No. Yeah. We don't, get, we don't negotiate with terrorists at Barstool. What, so what is, what is the plan of action here? Yeah, I think Gaz, my, my, my Twitter is officially gone right now. I think D Gaz is on it and, uh, hopefully he can get it back. I don't know if he can help me with the YouTube or Facebook. I don't go on those much anyway. Yep. We can, we can, we can escalate that and try to get everything back for you. Yes. Well, it could, it could be a little while. Uh, the second, the first time it happened, it happened on Instagram. I don't know if I told you, Dave, but this guy actually lied to me before Barstool. His name was J.W. Rhodes, um, and essentially he said he worked for Barstool. This was two years ago, and he knew I was a big horse racing guy, and pretty much he set me up. He lied to me for like six months. We were DMing back and forth. He said he, he worked for Barstool. He was going to have me go to this, this Kentucky Derby and pretty much essentially robbed me for money. And, you know, I just I can't be that stupid at the end of the day. So I got beat last year, two years ago at a Kentucky Derby tickets, which I spent twelve hundred dollars on. And now wow. my my Twitter's gone. <laughs> well, I think we get the Twitter back. Yeah. And it's Dana White joining. What, what a what a conglomerate of people we got going on here. Hey, Dana. What's up, Dana? Yeah, guys, good morning. Dana White. So with, with this Jersey Jerry Dana, who just got uh, his Twitter, Instagram, and everything stolen by an Indian hacker who he filled out all his information to, uh, and now is being held hostage to get it back. So that was late breaking news <laughs> before you came on. <laughs> That's brutal. Yeah, somebody yeah. tried to get me with that one the other day. It's a guy that I that, that that I'm acquaintances with. I wouldn't say we're you know we're, we're close friends, but he hit me up asking, saying, "Hey, would you do me a favor?" And, and they're trying to get you to click this link. It literally just happened to me a couple of days ago. Yeah. You knew the person who did that to you, though? No, no, no. I, I knew the person whose uh, email they, it came they from. Got hacked, and uh, the hacker was trying to get me to click on the link. That That is what now is happening with our guy, Jersey yep. Jerry. So, all right, Jerry, we're going to jump over, Dan, but good luck with getting it all back. Thanks, Dave. Later, Eddie. Bye, Dana. Good luck. Bye. Take care, brother. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> How stupid do you have to? He, this is the second time that he, he just told us somebody gave him fake Kentucky Derby tickets that he bought for 1200 I don't know where we find these people. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, unbelievable to get held hostage. Uh, oh, man. Anyways, Eddie? Yeah, so 
Dana, uh, UFC 270 uh, this weekend. Uh, we've been wanting to have you on for a while, at least I have. And I, uh, I'm always interested because I always give Dave shit because he's such a boxing guy. And I'm like, dude, you got to see the world of MMA. Are you aware that Dave's like such a boxing guy? He's a boxing guy. Dana's a boxing guy, right? I am. I am a boxing guy. That's true. Yeah. But Dave, you got to come over to the dark side, man. Come on. You know, I, you, you've never even been. To, let me tell you what I got to do. I got to get you to a live event. It'll change your whole you, perspective on the sport. You so. screwed us with Patty the Batty because his next fight is the 19th, which is the opening day of March Madness. I was going to go to London to watch him fight, but we can't because that's such a big event for us. Right. So I'm stuck here. Listen, you don't we, know who he's. Hey, we go we go every weekend almost. We're going to stop on a lot of things over the next year with well, uh, March, Patty the Batty and a lot of other guys. Th you don't know who he's fighting yet, right? What's that? You don't know his next opponent, right? It hasn't been announced? Uh, no, it hasn't. Um, you want to break it now? Yeah. Jared Gordon's probably going to be his... Uh, yeah. Breaking news. Breaking does he difference. even know that? Does he even know that? Yeah, I'm, I, I hope he does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Does. There it is. There's break because he told me... I talked to him two days ago. He did not know, unless he's lying. He's like, I don't know who I'm nah, fighting He wouldn't yet. lie. He'd tell you. So then of two days ago, you're all right. You're that's, throwing big cash out of me. ain't lying to you, buddy. No, I know. That's why he didn't know it two days ago. I, he better win. That's a big fight. Um, I, and by the way, I watch, I watch UFC. That's, I watch MMA. I, I've always said, a, with the exception of a couple of headline boxing, like if you're looking at you know, Fury Wilder, to me that, and I grew up on it, that is always still my premier event, and they're far more infrequent. You guys are throwing... I mean, you guys right. have fights every single weekend. That's not the world of boxing. Yep, absolutely. I, th you know what we got to do. Yeah, th that one's a tough one because, like you said, it's the start of March Madness, and it's in London, but we got to get you. That's that's how we'll get you in. We'll get you to a Patty Pimblet fight. 100%. When he comes I'd to fights to in the that. States, we'll, 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 we'll get you to the fight. 100 percent love to dave are you are you still where are you at are you out of mcgregor i forgot where you last were wait who me or him yeah dave you, you're kind of like out on him right well yeah i've been out on him for a while i mean he's one of the great microphone guys of all time but he hasn't won a big fight since i was 10 years old so i mean he he talks the game but at some point the talking wears thin if you're not delivering in the ring, the octagon, whatever you want to have it. He has, I mean, he hasn't won a big fight in a long time, and I don't think he's ever going to be a premier guy. Again, in terms of the best, he's a huge name, but he's not, he's not the best. He's not even close at this point. Did I lie, Dana? What do you no, think? Hey, fair enough. Listen, the beautiful thing about fighting is everybody has an opinion about, um, you know, who's going to win, who does what. I don't know, you know, and you're right. You know, Conor McGregor is a, is a massive draw. He's a big name. Uh, he's ranked number nine in the world right now, and he's got some work to do when he gets back. So, and, in, I mean, and, and the thing that I respect about Conor is he knows that. You know, Conor, uh, you know, is, Dave, you know better than anybody. Money complicates everything, man. When you when you get the kind of money that Conor McGregor makes and that he has, and especially in the fight business, to get up the fact that he's even still here and still has the fire to compete the way that he does is impressive. It's that old quote that I always say, the, the, I forget who said it, was it Hagler? Somebody, you don't, you don't do road work at 2 a.m. in silk pajamas or something to that effect. 100%, and since, since you're such a huge boxing fan, I mean, let's go here. Uh, at one point, I thought Anthony Joshua was, was gonna be, you know, God's gift to the heavyweight division. I thought this guy was gonna, you know, do all these big things. He made a couple of big paydays, and he's never been the same. Yeah, 100%. That affects it. One thing, so, Dan, you, you uh, I, I don't know when you would say this transformation. I think there's so many angles that I feel like you on a larger scale deal with what I do, but no more so than paying talent. Like, it's a talent business, and the bigger they get, the more they command, and you come up. So you're dealing with that now 24-7. That seems to be part of your everyday thing. You see it, whether you and Jake Paul are going back at it, or Naganu now saying, is that, is that the least favorite part of your job? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. So what is it? I've, what I've been is doing that? it for 20 years, you know what I mean? going on 21 years now I've, I've been doing this and it's always going to be an issue there everybody nobody's ever going to say oh man these guys are paying me way too much money it, it's ridiculous uh it's just never going to happen everybody wants more and 
the, the way that we've we've really figured this business out. Lots of people have tried. Lots of people have built smart guys, smart guys, big time entrepreneurs who, who have done, you know, major things in this world have tried to get into this business and they can't figure it out. We have, you know, and, and I have to listen to these these fucking uh, media guys who don't know jack shit about this business, how it runs or what's going on. Plus, there is a long term vision for this sport. And, and you know, the fact that, that, that you have people that are very excited to invest money into this sport and help it grow. Um, you know, so it's, it's not really, you know what the worst part of my fucking job is tickets. I still like sit getting people feed everybody every Saturday, like a, like a fucking wedding. And uh, I can see that's that. the worst part of my job. Do you think the payment thing is largely because you got, and, and this could be for outside, so I may be wrong. Boxing is not a league. Like it, it, everyone's kind of private contractors. So you can go do your, and you guys formed it as you guys are much closer to an NFL, an NBA or a league type environment, which is very different from traditional boxing where they're sole guys and they can go cut their own deals. hundred percent. And you, you just said it a minute ago. It's so true. Listen, I, I've got like 750 fighters under contract. All right. And we fight every weekend. And whether you're the top guy or somebody just walking in the door, we, everybody gets paid and everybody makes makes good money. And if you become that breakthrough star, you don't hear Conor McGregor crying about money. You know, you never heard Ronda Rousey crying about money. And I could go on and on with, with people who didn't because I have over 750 people under contract. Um, but every once in a while, somebody's going to pop up because they read that, you know, this guy in boxing, these guys fight once every two years. You know, a big boxing fight will ha will pop up every two years. I got big fights going on every weekend. It's it's a totally different business. It's not the same business. And um, but at the end of the day, when you think about how many fighters have in a contract, you know, and how many people are screaming about I want a lot more money. Not that have many. you uh, you said you said media it, like your disdain for some of it is that why you've been doing you know you do so much stuff with Robbie I know you're big with the Nelk guys like what is that like a, a new like wave you've been like finding has been great for the UFC yeah it's, it's one of the one of the things that I love the most about you know you, you could t come up with a lot of negative things about social media the internet blah 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 um, you know there's a lot of positive things that you can do too you can speak directly to your consumer now and cut out these middlemen. And, and yes, my hate for the media uh, grew through the pandemic. Um, I, I just never seen anything like this in my life. Plus, I mean, every every day I got some some asshole that owns a website or or, or uh, you know is part of the ma major media that thinks they know about our business. And I Do say you... it all the time. You know what they know about my business? What I tell them. That's it. That's Do all you... they know. <laughs> You, you are super outspoken on COVID and the cures. And I was watching them. I don't even know how to say it. You're more aware of that. I, I openly am like, I talk about it time to time. People will jump down my throat when I do it from all over. Do you ever regret talking about it? Just because I can't imagine that the, the, there's nothing like politics. If, if you even put your little toe in the water, people come at you from like every angle. I, it, it literally... It's crazy. Like, I heard that press conference you're talking the other day. The guy yells, are you a doctor from the side? Do you ever regret getting into that stuff? Because it, it, it isn't really, and I even say you, I saw you the interview, like, I don't want to get into politics, but you say a little bit. Once you do that, and I've run into it too, it, it's people come at you from every angle, both positive, negative, blah, blah, blah. Does that ever, do you ever be like, man, I wish I didn't talk about that? Well, two, no, never. But two things, you know, that day a guy asked me about what was going on with Rogan that all these, you know, so-called doctors had, had petitioned Spotify to cancel Rogan. And uh, after I had COVID, you know, I called Rogan as soon as I got COVID. Monoclonal antibodies, NAD drip, and ivermectin, if you can get your hands on it. They've turned, they've made ivermectin harder to get than, you know, think of the worst drugs out there. And this is what I was saying the other day. This stuff works. Rogan's used it with so many people. So many people have used it. They know it works. If it didn't work, they wouldn't be reeling it back the way that they are for whatever reason that this is going on. And if you talk to doctors, and I'm close to quite a few doctors, if they try to even prescribe ivermectin, 
the board comes down on them. Like, why are you prescribing ivermectin? Ivermectin, billions of doses have been given out around the world. The guy who invented it won the Nobel Peace Prize, right? Now, these things, there's no bad side effects. It's not going to do anything from my 15-year-old daughter to my 80-year-old mother-in-law. Did this regimen and we're fine. My, my mother-in-law, 80 years old, lifetime smoker, not the healthiest person in the world. She got COVID. We did the system. She was fine through COVID. It was like a, it was like a cold. And um, after I did it, I wanted to say, listen, people, you can get your hands on these monoclonal antibodies. And if you can get your hands on ivermectin, this is what you do. Just, just to help people, let people know. After I did, I got all these people calling me now saying, I can't get monoclonal antibodies. You used to get, be able to get them through like one of these IV hangover companies. Right? That's how See, I don't. Yeah, I don't know shit <laughs> about any of that. I, I like I said, I know so little about that. But if I'm listening to it and I know what it'd be, it, it, it you sound from a third party like that's a conspiracy theory. But why would any like I, I fundamentally still believe everyone wants everyone to be healthy. That may be a naive thing. Some people say it isn't. Some doesn't. But that I mean, I just. I don't know. I don't know enough about it, and it, it, but I know it does sound I, conspiracy well, theorists. But if you if you saw what was going on, DeSantis down in Florida was like, "Hey, you're not you're not telling us how many monoclonal antibodies we're allowed to get. We're we're, we're going to get all the monoclonal antibodies we want." Um, you know, these these, it's these states that are standing up and saying, "Hey, no, you're not going to do this." It's not a conspiracy theory at all. You used to be able to get these things from a hangover company that would come and put an IV in. Now yeah. doctors won't even give them to you. You know what I mean? For whatever reason. But I bet I could get my hands on some pain pills. I bet I could get some Xanax. You know what I mean? I, I bet I could get some Percocets or some Oxys or, you know, all these other things that destroy people's lives and for a fact kill people. Yeah. People my main thing these. on it. My main thing on it with this is like, whether it's you or Rogan, like I, I don't feel like Rogan or you have ever portrayed yourselves as doctors. So if you want to say what helped and worked for you, you should be allowed. And if people want to say, don't listen to him. They should be allowed. You 100%. Should be, there shouldn't be, you shouldn't silence on either side. All I'm right. with you. Do, Jake Paul. And I don't do you love really, to get into this stuff, but when somebody I, asks me, I'm going to tell you, you, you know, what my experience was and, and, and what Rogan has dealt with. And Rogan talks to tons of smart people. You know, and it's He's, almost like the, the thing that pisses me off the most is you can't have an opinion about it. If, if a different doctor has a different opinion and you, and you try to voice it, you know, what are you, a doctor? You get attacked and all these people lose their minds. It's insane. Yeah. Th that, I would agree with that. Speaking of another subject you probably hate talking about, Jake Paul. I think he's a genius. Yep. I think he's one of the best creators we've had. And I'm an internet guy and I've been following the Paul family. You two have been going back and forth, back and forth. A guy like you, I almost feel like would like Jake Paul. Be like yeah. the guy's brilliant at what he does. I, I don't. I don't hate Jake Paul, and uh, you know, you know, I, I've dealt with with kids like him for most of my career. You know, this is the kid that's out there and has created some buzz, and he's trying to make some money. You know what I mean? You can't you can't fault the kid for that. Um, you know, I don't always agree with him. I, I put out a challenge to him last week, and you saw he he wanted nothing to do with the challenge. So. You know, uh, I, I don't like to get caught up in all the talk, and sometimes I do because that's just me. But yeah, no, yeah I, you're I big time cutter. Paul. Yeah, so and I like Logan Paul very much. Yeah, we work with Logan. I, I again, I think I like Logan a lot. Work with him a lot. I think I think they're both brilliant. In the beginning, if I'm not mistaken, has he has he surprised you with his boxing? Has he surprised me? Um, yeah. well, you, you know, my take on that. I mean, they, they, just, he, they just came out and said that he's one of the, uh, he, he was one of the highest paid athletes under 25 or something like that. Athletes. Listen, you know how many guys that I know in the gym and that trainers know in the gym that if they fought guys 20 years older than them and 20 pounds lighter than them, <laughs> you know, it could create the buzz that this could, could, could create, um, yeah, they'd be some of the highest paid athletes under 25, too. I mean, I know. Some, but and, and most trainers that would listen to me know some real dudes, like some guys that are straight up killers, that if they fought guys 20 years older and 20 pounds lighter than them, 
would be seen the same way. Oh, I don't doubt that. But am I surprised this, that this kid who's a YouTube kid can come out and do what he's doing? Listen, I agree with you. I don't disagree with you. The kid is, has created a buzz, man. And, and a lot of these kids that are coming out of YouTube, whether it's these guys or the Nelk boys and, and the list goes on and on, there's some creative people out there doing some cool shit. It, 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 but it's specifically for the fight game. Weirdly, creating buzz is half is half the battle. If you can get the people, and I mean, he it's has something. Battle. It's the whole yeah, battle. Yeah. And he has something which is captivating and is always captivating. I don't care if you're a YouTuber. I don't care if you're MMA, boxing. If you can knock people out, and you're right, they're old. But he knocks them out in a fashion where it's like, holy shit. Like, I mean, that's a real guy he fought who had a great career. And in in never, we never saw him get knocked out like that. And the age and the size and all that. But that's what draws it in. Like, I was not out in the second fight. I'd watch him fight again because of the fashion he knocks out. Now, do I want to see him but fight higher put, level people? If I put Woodley in there with guys in the UFC that were 20 pounds heavier than him, you would have seen him get knocked out like that. But weren't you surprised? Positively, would have seen him get knocked out like that. But you, I could have sworn in the beginning. Didn't you say like one of your females would have beaten him? Am I am I wrong about that? Yes. No, I did. Noons. I so said, so that so he's Amanda got to be bad. Yeah. Said. She's You're right. Fucking, so she's he, bad girl. Yeah, but I mean, I don't I don't think that's you don't believe that anymore, do you? No, he's definitely he's he's de listen. He's a big kid, and uh, you know. They're doing this thing the right way. They're doing it the right way. Yeah. Eddie, you got anything? But I yeah, can see I, how I mean, people who don't know about fighting could get sucked into this. And that that's that's what he's created. And, and his him. biggest... Listen, I'm not and his the big, doing it. Good yeah. for him. I, I, I mean, we'd be remiss not to bring it up, but did you guys see the story yesterday with Rovell? Oh, yeah. You and I hate him equally. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see it. What happened with him? So he, You'll love uh, it. You'll he, love it. <laughs> he was like talking about something about Miami and it turned into someone called him racist. And he's like, how could I be racist when I have a Rosa Park signed NAACP card and I have the most, I have the largest Martin Luther King uh, autograph collection in the world. And I have black friends. He is getting yeah. dragged across. <laughs> What's good. Oh, here we go. Here it is. Well, you can listen to it. Good job, Kareem. Explain it to, to the fan base so we, everybody can get on the same page. Sure, I have I have uh, over nine MLK signed items. I am a humongous fan of what he's done, uh, and over the last seven years, I've collected a lot of things. Uh, it's not only MLK; it's a lot of Black history. I own a Rosa Parks uh, signed NAACP card, so it was pretty shocking today how I was called racist um, when. When I am a student and lover of Black history, and it was it was I never expected the reaction that I that I got today. Hmm. That's funny. So so why were they calling him racist? What was what was the reason? I, I forgot ex exactly. It what started he with NIL in University of Miami. He wrote an article. So uh, th there's a the Ruiz family is sponsoring NIL guys at Miami. It started with that, and then he said, "How could I be racist? I have these cards." But the thing that's really getting people upset is he refuses to donate these or give them to museums so people can see. And he's like, I won't do that. But he, he got him. And I think just so many people don't like Darren to begin with 100%. that if he opens himself up a little bit, people just come from the rafters for him, 100%. from the absolute and, and rafters. I don't even know enough about the guy. He's just a douchebag. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, the, the reality is he's probably not a racist guy. He's probably not a, he's a douchebag. And when you're a yeah. douchebag and you're completely unlikable like this guy is, yeah, any it, little thing is fun to attack. It opens the door for sure. 100%. Um, Dave, have you ever got into how about the Fertitas buying Barstool? Not uh, with no. Dana, I don't think. Did you know that? we were So I did. This was, yeah, this was before we did our deal with Chernin. Myself and Eric Garcia, we flew out to Vegas, met with the Fertitas. They were actually one of the few groups I truly liked where I would have been like, yeah, I'd do a deal with them. And we just bought Rough and Rowdy, which is like kind of the predecessor, weirdly, to celebrity boxing. Except, And the issue I had was they wanted a 10-year deal. And it's like I wasn't going to sign 
10 years at this point of Barstool working for anybody. It's like, I'm not doing a 10-year deal for anything. But it was a great meeting. We went in that office. They had their own personal chef. Also uh, is, is when we met, that's the first time that uh, Jake's new guy. He was still with yeah, right, right. the Fertitas there. So you guys now, do you guys not get along now? Well, we never did. <laughs> Ever? Ever. No. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, so, we never yeah. did. Yeah, that was uh, that was I would say as close pre churning that we were to doing a deal with anybody. Yeah, no, they're great guys, and 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 if you had done the deal, you'd have loved working with them. Yeah, no, they they were great. They're straight, like like I said, I had a great impression of them. Great. What impression. what happened with the Raiders, Dana? weren't you weren't you the, something about the stadium? Was there some some? He's a, he's a, he's well, he's a, he's two faced, is what Dana is. He he claims to be a Patriot fan and was at the time trying to lure Tom Brady to Vegas. It's like, well, can't do that. So, <laughs> facts are not friends of Dave Portnoy's. Okay, uh, what really <laughs> happened was uh, Brady was already leaving the Patriots, so I was trying to get him. To, he was trying to figure out which team he was going to go to. So I was trying to get, why would I not want him in Vegas? I mean, look at what he's done. Look at what he's accomplished, what it would mean to this city. I, you know, listen, I, I, I'm from Boston. I'm a diehard Patriots fan. Um, so Patriot, and, Patriots play Bucks in Super Bowl, obviously not happening. You're, you're rooting for the Patriots, clearly. Of course, of course. Okay. But I won't yeah. be mad if Brady wins. <laughs> well, see, then you're not. That is not it. That is then you are not diehard Patriot. Like I, Tom Brady has done more probably for Barcelona Sports, the company it grew, helped. But I want him sacked a thousand <laughs> times. I want like if they play the Patriots, I want him to get demolished. There's no well if they win. I, I'm gonna go down and take a picture. You'd be on the field taking pictures, schmoozing, doing your thing, and I'd be doing double fingers. Like so, that is where it is. There, there is no confusion there. <laughs> I, I understand. But Brady is a very good friend of mine. I love him. And, uh, you know, I hope he wins three more Super Bowls. <laughs> he may. He may. You never know the way he's going. He doesn't age. Last, uh, I, I'm sure you've been asked this, and I don't consider myself. I'm curious what that guy Robbie would say. Putting you on the spot, top three MMA guys ever. You'd have to go. Uh, Anderson and this can Silva, be. Yeah. GSP. Jones. And Usman, Jones is, Usman a, is getting getting up there, too. Oh, yeah. So if you're going to put. Yeah. Usman. Usman. I was wearing the Barcelona. Anderson Silva. He's a guy. Wh- all right. That's a fight that I could see happening at some point with Jake Paul. Right. He's oh, boxing now. He's available. He's out there. He's Bill. Apparently, he's been reaching out to them, and they're not. They're not getting back to him. So you think that's somebody they don't want the trouble with? If I read in between the lines, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know when they're going to think that this kid's ready for 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 a real fight. You know what I mean? So, um, but Anderson Silva's available. And what do you say? That's a he real a, fight. He tore a belt for it. Wants that fight too. Would you say that's a real fight, Anderson Silva? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Anderson Silva's almost 50 years old. <laughs> He's almost 50, which, you know, is in their wheelhouse. That's those are the... Yeah, those, those so are the... the- that, that's a cover your ass. That's a cover your ass answer, though, because he's a real fight. But if he loses, you're going to hit him with these 50. Bro, let, let, let me tell you this, okay? How old are you now? 44. Yeah. Nobody at almost 50 or, or, or over 40 should be fucking fighting anymore. I mean, I yeah. remember back in the day, you're a boxing guy, but, you know... George uh, Foreman. What uh, George Foreman came back in his early 40s, and the world was horrified that this guy was back fighting. Yeah. And now, because of you know, people take care of themselves better, anti-aging, all the science that goes on today. You know, guys are are, are, are aging better than they used to. But you know, when, when you're 24 and you're guy, you know, I, I think how old Anderson now is he? 45? He's 45 or 46. You know what I mean? It's just like. Yes, Anderson Silva is a real fight, but at the end of the day, he's 46 years old. Right. You know? Yeah. Fair. I just got one more. I just got one more. Yeah, Dana, we talk a lot. Dave and I talk a lot about this show, about him, you know, the day he leaves and he rides off into the sunset. When do you see that for you, and do you think you'll ever be fully out? It's hard for me because I I love to do this. This is what I love. Um, Yeah, I, I can't see myself anytime soon, you know? Unless some, mm-hmm. something crazy happened, I, I don't see it happening. 
Well, let, let me ask you then, and this is building on that, and it's something that I've gone through. You guys sold the company, made a shit ton of money, mm -hmm. but you, you sold the company. Yep. Has there been any changes, anything you missed when it was, you know, like I saw your answer the other day, the ESPN, and it's still their thing. They raised it five bucks. I guess people are complaining about that, um, which is crazy to me. But you're like, well, it's not my decision. I, I, it's ESPN's decision. Are there any things you, you miss when it was all you guys? I miss, you know, you, you know, my two best friends that I used to work with every day. Um, other than that, a lot hasn't changed. Ari Emanuel has actually been a great partner. And uh, what I like about Ari is, you know, now that we're a public company, which I'm sure you can uh, you can understand, he deals with a lot of the bullshit that I that I don't have to deal with. You know what I mean? I don't I, I don't know how well I'd handle that stuff. Um, so so really hasn't been much change. He's great to work with. Let's me do my thing. And uh, and yeah, I mean, the fact that ESPN uh, controls the pricing on the pay-per-view, that, that's us. We, we, you know, we did that deal. So I can't look at it and go, oh, this is, this is bullshit. They do that. Listen, I, I, I don't love it. I don't think right now is the right time, but um, we, we, we cut the deal. We signed it. Do you regret the deal or are you like kind of happy that's out of your hair? I, I don't regret anything with ESPN. ESPN has been an, an unbelievable, I say it all the time, you know, when you're a, a, a company like us, a sport like us, you know that someday you want to be on ESPN and you know that when you do finally get with ESPN, it's going to be a game changer, but you don't know till you really get on there how good these guys are and, and, and uh, what a whole nother level you go to when you're with ESPN. I wouldn't, we got I, I don't regret anything with ESPN. We got on ESPN and then they canceled us within 24 hours. We have not been on ESPN since. So <laughs> that was that was that was the game changer for us. It went a little bit different than yours, but it was still a game changer. Just changed a different way. Right, so, I get it. But you guys I, ESPN are, are, yeah, are yeah. very different. A little yeah. different. All right, I appreciate you coming on, Dan, and spending some time with us. And I, next, not this Patty, the Patty, the one after. We'll be there for sure. Awesome. I'll be UFC all over 270. You I'll, I'll give you a heads up before we make the fight, and uh, and we'll figure it out. Perfect. Thanks for awesome. having me, guys. See you guys. Thanks, Dan. UFC 270, Naganu game. Go order it. Go check it out Saturday night. All right, thanks to Dana for coming on. Before we continue, Dave, we got to talk about Manscaped. Before we get to inside Barstool, uh, you like to keep it trimmed down there. You like to keep it clean. Yeah, I need it. I actually got to do it. Rosa red, violets of blue. Don't let a wild pube wreck you. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. Our sponsors at Manscaped are here for you with the best tools to get your balls ready for the special occasion. Uh, holiday went by quickly. So did you remember to take care of your package with the best tools for the job? The Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped is just the thing every guy needs in life to make each and every day just a little more special. Number one product in this package is the Lawnmower 4.0. The electric trimmer is designed to hair tr uh, trim hair on loose skin. Gets this, the trimmer's advanced skin safe technology. It has a special technology. It has the advanced skin safe technology, reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate balls. I don't know if you've ever cut your balls. You cut your balls, it bleeds for like 10 days. You Bang. can't do it. So yeah, that's very, very important. I'd like to propose making uh, February 13th a national holiday, National Shave Your Balls Day. I can get behind that. Get 20% off free shipping with the code Portnoy at manscaped.com. That's 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code Portnoy. It's new year. No pubes in 2022 with Manscaped. All right. So I'm writing a note to myself. February 13th, National Shave Your Pubes Day. All right. Fine. Fine. It makes sense. Yeah. On paper, it makes a lot of sense. Just like 15, 15, 30. I don't know if maybe you want to do it on, well, they said 13th, 12th, just to look, give you, I, so it's not totally fresh, you know, give it like 48 hours to get back, like a kind of natural, whatever, it's up to Manscaped, February 13th, unless the powers that be say they want to switch it to the 12th. I yeah. would do the 12th, but they can do the 13th. Like a haircut, it needs a couple of days to settle. Correct, exactly, that's where I was coming from, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was good, I think. Yeah, all things considered, it, it worked out, huh? I don't know Dick when he starts talking about monoclones and Shauna clones. And the only thing is what I said. He and Joe Rogan <laughs> should be allowed to say whatever the fuck they want to say. I don't think anyone looks at Dana White and is like, oh, he's a doctor. Or, or fucking Joe Rogan, like, oh, he's a PhD. Like, you can say what you want. They're, take 
you, people are listen, don't listen. And on the other side, you can be like, they're idiots. Listen, don't listen. Yeah. By, by the way, do we have breaking news on the Patty the Batty fight? Yeah. Is Sounds that known? Like no, he said it wasn't. He, he said he hopes Patty knows. He reacted like he wasn't even. I, I, I literally talked to Patty yesterday or the day before. He didn't know. I told him we couldn't. I was going to go to London for his fight. It's the opening weekend of March Madness. Can we yeah, cut that up and get that out? Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Um, no, I thought that went well. So you're a little, little less steamed after that? I don't even know that I'd use the notes. I just want the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just good to have in the back of your brain if you get caught. Like, because it's hard for me to go through the notes in the middle of the interview. Like, I didn't even look at the notes. But there may be stuff on the notes that I wish I asked them about. Yeah. Um, all right, then. Just a couple more things we'll get out. Uh, the Jim McElwain shark video with Caleb was unbelievable. Awesome. And I'm going to... What are you going to say? Remind me about it next week, whether I want to talk about it. Okay. Is it evolving that, I assume? Yes. Okay. Um, what vindication for Jim and Jimmy John, too, for that, for that matter? Both vindication. It was a great video. Great video. Great job by Caleb. Yeah, credit awesome. to me. Credit to me. Credit to me. That video does not happen without me. Why? What did you do like for it? It's like, are we doing the shark video? And they're like, no. The school said, no, we can't do it. And I'm like, what are we talking about? And then I reached out to the Arizona Bowl, Central Michigan, back to Caleb, and got it all. It's like, what are we talking about? Of course we're doing it, and got it all set up. Like, they, was, it was done. We weren't doing it. What'd you do that, Paul? I just want, how, how's the reaction been from them since it's come out? Oh. Talk to me next week, and we'll, we'll figure out. Fuck, all right. About. Now I want to know. No, Dave. Uh, Dave's doing what Dave doesn't get credit for. Dave's biting his tongue for the time being. Okay. Right, it, was a, it was a perfect video, and if anybody at the highest levels of anything in the world have a problem with that video, they should go fuck themselves. Oh, okay. I think I know where you're going for. I, I, I know where we're at here, Dave, I'll, so we'll keep it at that. We'll talk next week. Um, <laughs> KFC gave uh, gave Frank uh, tap water. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> Stunning. I people are like Frank overreacts. I gotta be honest. If I ordered two bottles of waters and just got tap water, I'd be furious too. That's an yeah. affront. That's an affront. <laughs> well, I mean. Also, how come there's no water at the office? What's going on with that? Don't know. There always seems to be water at the office. Oh. Frank has his, I'm complaining about something trivial yet huge, saunter down to a T. Like the way he walks when he complains, he's, he's perfect at it. It's so good. Um, and then the, I guess we'll end with this. I'll just save the rest for next week. The, so we got into a little bit with him, but Danny Boy Kane in this whirlwind with Levitard and the Ruizes and the uh, and Rovell is like, I'm at the edge of my seat with all this shit. I'm going on um, on Twitter Spaces with Danny Boy tonight. Danny Boy has me jumping through window. I mean, I, he, I, whatever Danny tells me to do, I do. And I, he's got me doing. I, I, we're switching times. I'm, me and Danny are in constant communication. The lines of communication between Danny Boy Kane and I right now are wide open and consistent. So tonight, I don't know. This comes out today, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tonight, I think 10 p.m. Uh, the Ruiz family will be on. Danny Boy, myself, hopefully Cat. It's going to be a lot. But yeah, so I think I kind of helped stir that pot yesterday a little bit because I saw Dan Ravel wrote an article about the NIL in Miami and specifically the Ruiz family who created a company to pay. And I just quote tweeted, I'm like, keep your filthy nose out of, out of the you, Darren. And then Dan, Danny, come, Danny, did you see what Danny said last night? 
I saw a couple tweets. I don't know which one you're specifically referring to. The nerves? On Ravel? No. <laughs> the, the talk about, I'm sorry, we're going to really ruin our show because oh. this tweet, I have, to, this is Danny Boy Kane last night at 8, 11 p.m. I have to be upfront and honest. After listening to a little bit to the space last night, I'm a little bit nervous about tonight, and I do have a little bit of butterflies in me. Let's put it that way. This is 8, 11 a.m. Excuse me. That's for tonight. Yeah, Danny yeah. Boy, this tonight, every – Tonight's Twitter space could change it all. It's a big one. Be there. Can you set? Can you at least set, if he's got you jumping through hoops? Can he at least make a deal that he could come on this show? I no. I I don't. I answer to Danny Boy. Danny Boy doesn't answer to me. Like he literally has me. I, he gives me marching orders and I go. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of worried about you though. You're going to be caught in a situation here though. Because the, I, think, I, well, I saw, yeah, I did see Lebitard's guys taking shots at Ruiz. Yeah, so it was uh, obviously Billy Corbin. He was talking about with you last week. But it seems like old Miami is going to go against, you're kind of like new Miami. I don't know where Ruiz is. Dan, but, they, they have a problem with it too, Corbin does with yeah, Ruiz? Yeah, Corbin was on the Lebitard show when they talked about it, yeah. Listen. I don't know if it's specifically that that they had a problem with, but there was some type of problem with, uh, with, with, with that situation. Listen. This is Sunday, and I hate revealing private conversations, but I DM Danny, and I said, thank you, Danny. Danny, what's going on with the Ruiz family? I'm seeing some heavy accusations. I don't want to get caught up in anything nefarious or anything that could hurt the Canes. <laughs> and he replied, I spoke to the Ruizes last night, and they're simply not true. It will not hurt the Canes in any way. So we're good. Are these texts or DMs? DMs. Oh, okay. He has my number, though. We're, we're also texting. You're on number basis, too? The, these, these, let me reiterate for you, Eddie. These rumors are simply not true. That is directly from Danny Boy Kane. And I checked it. I, last thing I want to do is hurt the Canes. That's all we need. Um, all right. Any, any, any last words here? You, you know, Kareem, want to patch it up before we close out? Kareem, you got anything? It's not patched up. He's just going to be better. Kareem, nothing? No, I got nothing. I'll be better. I like Kareem. Clearly, you felt bad that you yelled at him. That's, that's rare. If I didn't like Kareem, he'd be fucking done on this thing. I try to think if I ever had people who I don't like. Uh, no. I mean, I generally like Kareem. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I like Frankie. Frankie was the worst to ever do his job for a couple of months. That's right. why my guys go on to success, because at some level, you just got to let them know that they're being terrible at their job. Thanks mm -hmm. for the compliment. Yeah. Well, you're in retirement mode. But <laughs> him, um, and, him and Bubbly Gang doing Bitcoin conventions down in Florida. Um, all right. Thanks again for, to Dana White for coming on. Uh, Dave, thanks. We'll be back next week. That's it, everybody. We will see. I you thought there. I pushed him on the Jake Paul stuff a little bit. Yeah, I, th I, I would say so. He. Um, no, you didn't think so? Well, I mean, he's just done it so many times at this point. Yeah, I didn't really know. Yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. All right, all right. That's it. We'll see you guys next week.